So with Dragonflight yet again raising the level cap and giving our characters a general boost in power, a lot of the old world content have suddenly become much more efficient to do, especially if you like cool rewards such as cosmetics, mounts, pets, and even making gold. So in today's video, I'll be counting down my top 5 now easily soloable old world pieces of content for awesome rewards. And with that, starting from number 5, and this isn't really ranked in any particular order because a lot of these rewards and content are quite subjective, but I would like to start with Island Expeditions, which features lots of really unique uh, rewards and a plethora of them, like from transmog pieces to pets that are cageable that you can even sell to very unique looking mounts. And very significantly, it's one of the very few places that can drop one of these types of parrot mounts which itself is enough reason for many players to want to do islands. Now the way islands work is that different types of islands will be on rotation every week that you can queue for and these are sort of like solo instances um, that you can enter or you can enter as a group but with gear and levels from Dragonflight you shouldn't have to and should be able to solo the highest difficulty mythic islands without much difficulty and with efficiency. Now one way to target rewards you want is to look at the rotation of islands that are live for the week. And this you can actually tell by going over to Wowhead and selecting the BFA tab. And then what you'll want to do is to also check on Wowhead the types of mobs you want to target for the specific rewards you want. For instance, if you like to target farm the parrot mount squawks, you would want to go for islands that spawn pirate mobs. Plus, and even if the island and mob type you want is not available for that week, just by farming up island expeditions on Mythic of course, in general, you'll be able to earn these doubloon currencies that you can then trade in for the specific types of satchels that you want that might have odds of dropping the items you want, right? For example, here, the Crestfall Salvage crate tier specifies that you can get items that drop from dragons as well as pirates. And so this one actually has a decent chance of dropping the Squawks mount as well. Now lastly, to queue up for these island expeditions, all you have to do is to find the representative in your Battle for Azeroth um, city hub. For example, for Horde it would be the Zara Lore, and then for Alliance it's Boralus. And to access these cities, you could simply teleport there from your portal room in your main faction cities. Next at number 4, and this is actually a 2-in-1 because of how similar in nature they are and because they also came out in the same patch, and that is the Mechagon Zone as well as the Nazratar Zone. And now there are a ton of rewards associated with both of these zones, from pets to mounts to cosmetics. Most notably also with each of these zones, there is a meta achievement where if you complete all the required achievements, you'll be able to unlock some truly cool and unique looking mounts, starting with the Crab Mount from Nazratar. And then there's also a lot of other mounts that you can pick up along the way, aquatic ones that are also quite unique. But the Snapback Scuttler here used to be a lot more difficult to obtain back when it was the most recent content in Battle for Azeroth because of the rare spawns you had to kill and you had to wait for them to spawn and for people to not kill them before you. And some of them were a bit tougher mobs as well that you might have needed groups for, which now because first of all the zones are a lot more empty so you'll be able to find the rare a lot more easily, especially with the help of add-ons like Rare Scanner to help you track which rares you've killed and also where they would spawn on your map, and also utilizing guides on say Wowhead, which I'll link below as well for both of the meta achievements. So again, there's one for Nazratar which unlocks the Crab Mount, and then for the meta achievement of Mechagon, you get to unlock this Mecha Cycle Model W, a really awesome looking mount. And by the way, there's actually one look-alike mount that you'll be able to somewhat farm from a rare elite. That will also see fewer people farming it because of you know a lack of players on Mechagon, right? So that's the sort of bronze cycle that we're seeing here, the Junk Heat. Drifter. And again, even without completing these meta achievements, you'll still be able to unlock a plethora of rewards from battle pets, many of which are cageable and sellable, to mounts by say gaining reputation with each of the factions, right? The Rust Bolt resistance on Mechagon, and then the various, uh, there's actually a Horde and Alliance versions 
of the Najatar factions. And then there's also bodyguards on Najatar that you can gain further reputation with to unlock other rewards with as well. Among other rewards like rare spawn drops and different types of currencies that you can trade in for different types of rewards as well. And for all these, you can just check out the guides I'll have linked below from Wowhead. Now it does take a short quest line each to unlock each of these zones, but it shouldn't be much trouble or time, especially with the geared character and an overleveled character, even from Shadowlands and of course from Dragonflight, right? And once you've unlocked each of these zones, you'll be able to, first of all, teleport to Najatar from your Battle for Azeroth city. And as for Mechagon, you'll be able to access it from that city as well, but not through a portal, but by talking to an NPC by the docks. Now if you haven't unlocked Battle for Azeroth flying, it might be very helpful to do so to be able to make both of these zones or traversing in both of these zones a lot more efficient. And it also shouldn't be too difficult as well um, if you already have that time to do you know, the extra daily quests and build up reputation with each of those factions. Now moving on to number 3, and this one can actually have a bit higher of a barrier to entry because of some of the mechanics involved and also the quest line to unlock this you know, zone is actually a bit longer and also you have to do a bit of other content to get enough currency to be able to run this content. And so I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing this one unless you really like the rewards and actually enjoy running this content. And it does offer some pretty unique looking rewards. The piece of content in question is called Visions of Nazoth from Battle for Azeroth. So primarily you'll be able to unlock this very unique looking black dragon scale backpack inspired by Neltharion's um, design. How fitting for the Dragonflight expansion, right? And also besides this, you'll also be able to unlock a mount this is also a very unique looking old god-esque mount called the Wicked Swarmer. And there are also some achievements you can complete for rewards like certain old god themed pets and actually a mount called the Black Serpent of Nazoth, which um, the achievement is actually not that difficult to do or if you're already especially really geared up compared to the aforementioned Mechagon and Nazratar ones that might take a bit more time because you have to do like rare hunting and it's a bit RNG based, right? But for this one, you simply have to complete the necessary, you know, runs and be able to pass like the DPS checks and whatnot to be able to unlock this mount. However, besides DPS, there's another interesting mechanic called Sanity, which depletes and rather quickly if you don't have the Legendary Cloak upgraded. And this Legendary Cloak from Rathion, you actually have to um, keep upgrading by doing more and more runs and then also utilizing the talent tree here to make the runs a bit easier. This talent tree is probably not as important if you're super geared up from Dragonflight, but it can definitely help uh, even with things like restoring your sanity and the cloak when you upgrade it makes it so that your sanity depletes a lot slower, right? So this is a bit less um, of something that you can just simply check with your DPS because you have to run around the map and movement speed isn't really dictated by item level, right? So just by moving around and your sanity's, sanity is going down, you won't really be able to prevent that unless you have that cloak at least somewhat upgraded. So this is sort of the barrier to entry for the Visions of Nazoth. And of course, if you like a more in-depth overview of the Visions of Nazoth from Battle for Azeroth, I'll have a guide for that from Wowhead link below in the description box as well. Now before we move on to number 2, I have a couple more rewards I want to highlight from the Visions of Nazoth that are pretty easily missed but can be pretty easy to also add to your rotation should you decide to run these. And the first one is the Male Muncher, which is a look-alike recolor of the Black Serpent of Nazoth from the Achievement, which you can actually have a chance of dropping by clicking on mailboxes throughout the visions. That'll be able to drop them out for you. And next we also have the Shadow Barb Drone, which actually doesn't involve running any Visions of Nazoth at all, because this actually comes from a series of daily quests. You sort of raise your own larva, uh, with this questline from this NPC right here in Oldham. 
And speaking of which, by the way, if you want to do visions regularly, you'll also often have to do these assaults, which happen in Oldham, as well as the Veil of Eternal Blossoms in Pandaria, which will actually help you rack up the currency needed to run these visions. And one sort of easy way to get the currency is to do the sort of mini visions. So next to the town, you'll be able to find a daily quest explanation mark to zone into like a mini version of the visions. And um, to be able to knock out that pretty quickly to get a lot of the currency very efficiently to run your visions. Next, the number two, and I get that Shadowlands probably wasn't an expansion that's left the best taste in everyone's mouths, but its flagship feature, Torghast, has become significantly easier again thanks to the power-ups we've gotten in Dragonflight. And in terms of the rewards you can get from it, there are a lot of drops for cosmetic items that you can sort of pick up uh, from vendors within the instance, and also achievements that are fairly easy to accomplish with you know, Dragonflight levels of gear by being able to just complete, you know, certain levels of the instance and achieve certain scores on them and so on and so forth. And a lot of these mounts, especially that you get from these and the cosmetics as well, are also fairly cool looking in my opinion at least and somewhat unique. Now this is a bit more straightforward compared to some of the other things I have on this list, but I'll have a guide to Torghast linked in the description nonetheless for your reference. Now before we move on to number one, I have a quick honorable mention and that is the series of glory achievements for old raids and dungeons such as from Battle for Azeroth, Legion, and even before if you haven't done those already. And these are essentially a series of achievements that have you kill each of the bosses in certain ways in all the raids and dungeons as well as complete um, heroic versions of each of the bosses. And most of these are soloable, the achievements that is, even the Battle for Azeroth ones, especially in Dragonflight, right? So a general rule of thumb is that two expansions earlier is essentially solo content. And that's exactly what Battle for Azeroth is at this point. Although there may still be a few select achievements that require two or more players to be able to do, just because of the specific boss mechanics and achievement mechanics. But you should be able to recruit, you know, a helpful person um, to your party just for a certain encounter uh, relatively easily, actually, I found, despite, you know, how niche some of these achievements might be. And the cool thing about these achievements is that almost all of these mounts have a unique model or a very rare model like the Entoran Gloomhound here, which I really, really like from the Glory of the Argus Raider, which is from Legion. And for these, you can definitely check out Wowhead for each of these specific uh, meta achievements. And I won't link them because there are just too many, so you might want to just pick and choose the ones you might be interested in. And with that, at number one, definitely last but not least, this is also probably one of the easiest ones to do on this list because it's Legion content, and yet the rewards are some of the coolest being alternate artifact weapon appearances. You get three of each, well one for each spec. Some classes only have two specs, so um, two or three of each on each of your characters. And the most notable thing is that, and the reason I have this on my list, is that with the latest Dragonflight patch, the rewards have actually become account-wide, meaning that you only have to complete the quest line once to be able to unlock all the alternate and really cool looking um, artifact appearances on all your characters. And all you really need to do is to follow the quest line that starts with Archmage Kallik or Kalikos, who you might be familiar with in Dragonflight. But anyhow, just follow this quest line, which will take you through Legion zones, dungeons, and raids, which are all very easily soloable anyway, with you know a Dragonflight or even Shadowlands level character. And that's pretty much all I want to cover in today's video about the best easily soloable old world content. Let me know what other ideas you might have in the comment section below. I'll definitely answer your questions. And with that, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.